What is going on guys? Today I'm going to be giving you the promised video. I only promised it like a week and a half ago, but still the Awakened Logias video. And more specifically, I'm not going to be giving you any like concrete theory or anything because really we do not have that much evidence about anything regarding Awakened Logias. I mean, the closest thing to it really obviously is the Punk Hazard battle. That is what most people look at when they talk about Awakened Logias. I've also heard a little about Crocodile. Maybe I'll mention him a little bit later in this video, but the most important thing is without a doubt the Punk Hazard battle. A lot of people think that pretty much, at least the way I am hearing them say it, is that it pretty much works like an Awakened Paramecia where your Devil Fruit just affects your environment as well. But I don't think that is exactly the case. I think that it is true that it does affect your environment, but it's not even close to being in the same way as an Awakened Paramecia does. So pretty much, in case you need to be caught up for every reason, let's just break down exactly what we saw in Punk Hazard, okay? It's not that complicated. Pretty much, obviously, Punk Hazard is the battlegrounds of the Aokiji vs. Akainu battle, the 10 day long fight where they just went all out against each other, pretty much trying to kill the other, at least I would imagine they were. Of course, that's not exactly how it ended. But I will say, like I've said in previous videos, we don't know exactly how it ended. Of course, the official victor is Akainu, but is that really the case? Not really the point right now. That's not what we're talking about. That is for another day. But so yeah, their battle took place over 10 days, and by the end of it, the entire ecosystem was not just destroyed, but the climate of the island was changed. And yes, I said climates, which doesn't really make much sense. Of course, this is the One Piece world, so that wouldn't be too surprising if one small island had two different climates on different sides of the island, but that's not natural at all. It's actually because Aokiji and Akainu completely shifted the climates of their respective halves of the island. Akainu's side of the island was pretty much a barren volcanic wasteland, which was pretty scary. It was even thought for some time that there was a dragon, but of course that wasn't actually the case. That was not a real dragon. But yeah, it's a pretty scary place to be. It seems like it was extremely hot pretty much anywhere you were standing, especially if you were near one of the many, many, many active volcanoes on that side of the island. And then on Aokiji's side, it was the polar opposite since he was the user of the cold fruit. His entire side of the island was very cold. There was snow, ice everywhere mountainous area it was very interesting to look at it was pretty much just like one super hot side and one super cold side and so now when we look at awakened paramecias from the past we have dofi's fruit and katakuri's fruit as of right now we don't have any other confirmed paramecias of course there are a lot of arguments for other ones that could be awakened i don't know if i really agree with any of them as of right now but these are the two that we have confirmed and they worked pretty much the exact same way. I guess you could say, again, like I've said before, Katakuri does have a little uh, extra ability to his. He can kind of do some cool moves, but we don't even know if Dofi couldn't have done something similar to that. But pretty much, they just turn their surroundings, like inanimate objects, into their Devil Fruit's ability. In the case of Dofi, it would be strings, and for Katakuri, it was just mochi. Like, if, you know, one of them would go up to a building and touch it while they're using their awakening, that building would turn into strings or mochi, respectively. And then when they would transform their surroundings, they could control what they created, pretty much as far as I've seen, similar to like bending from Avatar The Last Airbender. They just have absolute control of it, which is extremely useful, extremely powerful in a combat situation. Now, I've already made an entire video explaining why I don't think that is how every single Awakened Paramecia works because it doesn't make any sense in any way, shape, or form. And even more so, I don't think it would really make sense for Logias to work in the exact same way. For one thing, because in the same sense, it wouldn't really make that much sense for a lot of the Logias. But also, even if it did, why would we have, you know, Zoans have something completely unrelated to how Awakened Paramecias work? And then just Logias would work exactly the same as Paramecias? I, I'm, I'm just not really buying it. Like, I don't get why it would work that way. I'm not going to go as far as to say that it would work in the same way as an Awakened Paramecia, where pretty much the additional abilities granted by the Awakening are kind of random, or at least just random while being related to the fruit 
involved, but I think that they would all be extremely different from one another while just kind of following the same like basic fundamental foundation. Pretty much my idea for how an awakened Logia could work is, so they are supposed to be based on an element of nature. Every Logia is like an element of nature. What that means exactly, it's kind of weird, I guess, but we get the idea of it, you know, there's like the light fruit, I guess you could say, not exactly a light fruit, but kind of magma, coldness, darkness, all of that good kind of stuff. I think we can kind of understand what Oda means by an element of nature. So if that's what they are, maybe when in an awakened state, they could make your surrounding area, your surrounding environment or ecosystem, how much range you'd have on this maybe would be based on how adept you are at using your fruit or your awakening, I don't know exactly. But your surrounding area, would have the nature bended, I guess you could say. Bended that so pretty much the climate would end up changing to whatever your respective fruit is, like the weather that goes on or whatever creates your element of nature would have something to produce it, I guess you could say. Sometimes this could be a more physical thing and sometimes it could be if anything, nothing happening at all. What I mean by that exactly in the physical scenario, you could have like Akainu's fruit where maybe some volcanoes form, which would then obviously be able to produce magma, which is his devil fruit's element of nature. That's more than reasonable considering that is exactly what happened on Punk Hazard. There are volcanoes everywhere. I, I mean, those pretty much had to be made by Akainu in some way, shape or form, right? What if his awakening does exactly that? It makes volcanoes, which then produce magma, which potentially he could even have full control of in the same way that Dofi and Katakuri did. And then when I say nothing happening at all, I'm referring to the possibility of maybe Crocodile's awakening. He would have to be able to make sand happen, right? So what could happen is, just the area would pretty much not be subject to rain at all. It would almost never rain in the area that this awakening is used, which over a decent period of time, it wouldn't be instantaneous like how I imagine Akainu's would be, or even, of course, Aokiji's. It would take some time, but over, you know, the course, it would become a desert. Again, this theory is still kind of in the works. There's not too much to go off of and some of the fruits are a little complicated, but that's pretty much the best idea I could come up with for the sand fruit. And then in the case of Aokiji, his side of Punk Hazard is pretty much just covered with snow. It's extremely cold all the time. I could see it being reasonable that maybe a few times a week or so, there's just a giant fucking blizzard, right? Uh, do we think that could be possible? Also, I guess you'd probably have to say that just the general temperature would have to be drastically lowered, but it is lowered, right? Like, Akainu's side is extremely hot, and Aokiji is extremely cold. I guess it could just be that the island in general is extremely cold, and all of the magma and volcanoes make Akainu's side hot, but I, I don't think that that's really how it works. I think that's not really the main idea and punk hazard originally was like a rainforest so it shouldn't have been cold for any reason for other logias there is some definite potential i could see like maybe in the case of anel multiple times a week or maybe just at all times an area would have thunderstorms going on that's one seems pretty obvious i don't really know how effective that would really be maybe if he could direct these lightning bolts at his opponent that would be pretty useful Although, I don't know if they would really be that much stronger than just his ridiculous abilities that he already has. But it would be cool, right? It would be a good area of effect, I suppose. That would be nice. Since the other two admirals are the main topic here, I guess we should probably talk about Kizaru as well. This seems a little overpowered, of course, but it's also something that's been seen in Hunter x Hunter, and it wasn't ridiculously overpowered, so maybe the idea that Kizaru could make like a small sun of some sort, I guess, which would then be creating light. That one seems a little crazy. I don't know. I, I It would be cool, right? But yeah, th 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 that's a cool way that Kizaru could do it. I don't know. It's kind of hard to come up with ways for these things to be generated, these different elements of nature. Maybe you guys have some creative ways that this could be done for different devil fruits. I spent a ridiculous amount of time thinking about Akainu and Aokiji. It's been like 
months I've been thinking about how Awake and Logias could possibly work, and those two I thought about the most, so I came up with that for them. I think that that's very possible. I think it would be very cool if that is how it worked. If Oda really did have a way to make all of these Logias potentially be awakened, that would be cool. I would love to hear what you guys think about how they could potentially be awakened, maybe in the same way as mine. Maybe you have your own ideas for how an Awakened Logia could work. I'd like to hear that as well. I haven't heard that many good ideas for it. I don't really like hearing they would work in the same way as Paramecia as we've seen so far, because I don't think that really makes any sense. But yeah, so that pretty much wraps up this topic. If you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you already have left a comment letting me know what you think, maybe you would like to go even a step further, look in the description, join the link to my Discord I created. We talk about tons of fun things in there. There's a lot of different channels for different things, One Piece theories, different ideas for future videos you'd like to see, different versus battles you'd like to see, all that kind of stuff. Just general, like a meme channel, all that kind of of stuff it's a really cool place it's just got started and it's already pretty big there's a lot of people talking about a lot of stuff one piece it's awesome i'd like to get even more people in there make sure to check that out i hope you guys have an excellent rest of your day an excellent rest of your weekend and i'll talk to you on wednesday